Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we'll be changing the front differential fluid on my 2020 BMW M340i X-Drive. The procedure will be similar to F30 X-Drive, but for the people with rear-wheel drive models, so non-X-Drive, you will not have a front differential as far as I'm concerned. Simply, you don't have axles in the front and that makes it a rear-wheel drive vehicle. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot more content for the G20 in terms of regular easy to follow maintenance, tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years that you wouldn't want to miss out on. Enough yapping for now, let's get into it. Whenever you are changing any sort of oil or fluid, you want to make sure to be able to crack open the fill first. For accessing the fill plug off the front diff on our car, a G20 model, the front driver's side or left side of the wheel has to come off. Given the nature of this, I would advise lifting up the vehicle on jack stands on all four corners, which is exactly what I did here. And now if you look into your suspension setup, you are going to be able to see where I have my extension that's I'm wiggling right now. That's your fill plug. I'll attach another clip so that it's going to better show you at another angle. But basically it's just right beside your front axle on the driver's side or on the left side. The red circle that you see is your fill plug for the front diff right beside the axle. And next, let's talk about the drain plug. We do have a drain plug for the front diff, fortunately, so we don't have to siphon out the old fluid from the fill hole. And now let's crawl underneath the front bumper. You will have to remove a bunch of stuff for you to access the drain bolt. And this is going to be the plastic splash shield that you will have to remove. And that's held onto by a bunch of 10 millimeters. And the next one you'll have to remove is going to be, I believe it's an aluminum front stiffening plate that's held onto by these 18 millimeters. And I'll be able to tell how many bolts there are going to be after I have removed all of them. Let's take a second here and talk about the bolts that were holding the front stiffening plate and the plastic splash shield in place. These are the front stiffening plate and they are 18 mil. There are nine of them. And these are 10 mils that were holding onto the plastic splash shield and there are 10 of them. Just go through the parameter of the panels when you are removing them. Make sure all the bolts are out before you go and yank them out. But overall, there should be 10 of these and 9 of these. Giving you more of a visual of what's going on. So now let's crawl underneath from the front bumper. This is your steering rack, I believe. And this is your suspension setup. And this is where the front stiffening plate was. Now, if you go further you can see this is going to be your drain plug for the front diff and this entire unit the little guy is going to be your front differential and if you look up from here you can see your front axle and lines right up to your front differential and your drain bolt right on top that's going to be your fuel plug Let's take a different angle right here. So that is your front driver's side wheel after it's been removed. And then you would go in from here. And then you should see your entire front differential unit. And you'll be able to see your front differential drain plug that's right here. 
Looking right up, you will see your axle. And then your fuel plug is going to be on the right side of the axle. The front div is one entire unit. This should give you a better visual of what's going on. And next, let's remove the fuel plug. I was using a combination of extensions and was trying out different sizes of breaker bars to aid me in removing it. It's rather tight from the factory and didn't feel like it was 60 newton meters at all. It had got to be over 10 for some reasons. I'll share the combinations I've used after I've torqued down the fill plug, so stay tuned. For now, let's just enjoy the view for a bit. At this point, I already cracked open the fill plug with a breaker bar, but usually what I do is to undo it by hand all the way because if you see your new fill and drain plug, it's relatively a short thread. It shouldn't take too long for you to undo it by hand. I don't think this is a magnetic bolt, so that shouldn't be any metallic flake, probably just some fluid that's splashed onto it. And the Teflon seal is just completely busted. So definitely buy a set of new fill and drain plug for this job. Just glad to be replacing this now. Our next step is going to be removing the drain. It's pretty straightforward, just like that. Now that we're done draining like 99% of the old fluid, I bought two bottles of 500 milliliter that makes it a liter total. And the front diff only takes about 600 milliliter. Since I have more fluid than I actually needed, I'm just gonna run a bit off the new fluid to flush the system better. Shouldn't need a lot, 50 mil or so should be enough for you to complete that. Oops, missed the drain pan. And for the next step, we're just gonna quickly wipe it down and torque the drain plug to spec, which is 16 newton meter. And of course, as always, you wanna make sure you start threading in the bolt by hand. Then you would use a torque wrench to torque it down all the way. You don't wanna strip anything at all. At this point, what's left for us to do is to fill the front diff back up. Unfortunately, you can't really see what's going on from the fill side. I'll just give you some information here while you're watching this fast forward. There are actually two versions of the front differentials on the G20 chassis for BMWs. The first one is ours, that the fill plug is on the right side of your axle. Then you'll fill it up until it overflows. The second version is that the fill plug is on the left side of your axle. In that case, you would just want to fill up exactly 450 milliliter or else it's considered overflow. But since ours has the fill plug on the right side of the axle, we're just going to fill it until it overflows and then to cap it off. It takes about 600 milliliter for us to fill the front diff system back up and BMW dealership only sells their G2 fluid in 500 milliliter per bottle. So realistically speaking, you'll need two bottles to complete the job and it should be more than enough. You can see here that I actually have it overflow from this point. I didn't realize it and kept pumping. That was my fault for not checking. That's why my advice here is to check underneath every pump that you've done to see if there is any fluid coming out from the bottom. In fact, it's actually really difficult to see that it's overflowing from the fuel plug.
Made a mess at this job, but we're basically done here. I apologize for not being able to get the perfect footage of how I imagine it to be. However, the tolerance is really not forgiving at the fill plug side. And to make matters worse, you've got your headlights leveling sensor, your control arms and everything in your way that you wouldn't want to break any of those things. I actually dropped the fill plug twice at this angle and you can see me crawl back underneath, finally decided to hand tighten the fill plug from underneath the vehicle with my hand going up by the drain bolt. Some tips for you right here. Here you can see I'm jacking up the lower control arm so the things I've mentioned that's in your way will be less of a hassle by having the control arm slightly jacked up. That way you'll be able to sneak your torque wrench and your combination of extensions in to torque down the fuel plug, also at 60 newton meter. As you know, you will have your standard 14 mil hex or Allen socket to reach your drain and fill plug. Specifically, the uh, fill plug is going to need the combination I was mentioning earlier. I was using, I think this is an 8 inch extension or 9 inch extension right onto the 14 mil Allen socket. I was able to get to the fill plug with this one. Um, but I did have to, I did jack up the lower control arm at the driver's side front so that it give me, it gives me a better angle at viewing as well as maneuvering the fuel plug. The reason why is that if you look at it here, it's a very tight tolerance specifically with I believe this is your headlight leveler and just a bunch of sensors just going around. You don't want to rack any of them or it's going to be a lot of work to replace. So you just want to make sure you have the right orientation and combination of extension. So I was mentioning earlier, jack up from the lower control arm somewhere like right here. Uh, to an angle where you can comfortably fit your extension combination into the fuel plug to reach there. That's where it's the ideal situation that you don't want to bend any of them, whack any of thing, uh, out the things out of place. I was using my 8 inch, 9 inch, half inch drive extension with my 14 mil Allen socket because my Allen socket is actually a half inch drive but when I was trying to loosen the fuel plug it was really difficult so what I had to do was to use uh, an adapter half inch to 3 8 receiver plug it into the Allen socket and then use the same length like 8 to 9 inch 3.8 extension with a 3.8 breaker bar. Uh, I was using the 3.8 big breaker bar because it was uh, thinner than the half inch. It was basically this size compared to, well this is a torque wrench but it gives you an idea, this thing. So I was able to maneuver it way better with the half inch, sorry 3.8 um, uh, extension with the breaker bar. Just try different combination. Uh, just make sure you don't make a mistake where you are wreck, uh, wrecking, this, uh, wrecking the sensors out of places. I just started the car, shifted around drive, reverse, neutral. I didn't let the car roll even though it was on jack stands, not touching the ground for safety reasons. After that, came back here to check and didn't see any leaks at all. Everything looks good to go. I just gotta wipe down the undercarriage with brake clean to tidy it up. At this point, I think we can conclude the job of changing the front differential fluid on the G20 X-Drive. 
I sincerely apologize for the footage. They didn't come out as I imagined they would with the poor viewing angle at the field plug. But I hope it at least gives you a better understanding, a basic understanding of the procedures of attending this job and to learn from my mistakes. If I had to take on this front diff loop change again, I'll get a longer tube to sneak it into the fill hole better, checking underneath to see if it starts to overflow when I'm filling the front diff back up, and perhaps to jack up the vehicle a notch higher. At this point, we're basically done with the job. Of course, I'm gonna have to put the wheel back on and torque it down, then to lower the vehicle. Ideally, you would want to reinstall the two splash shields after your test drive to make sure you don't have any leaks. However, it's raining quite heavily today, and there are a lot of electronic components underneath the car that I don't want to risk running without the splash shields. I'll leave a carport underneath the car overnight and see if it develops any sort of leaks, then I'll know something is not right. If you made this far into the video, I really appreciate your support and that you're trying to learn with me how to change the front differential fluid on my G20 M340i X-Drive. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I have more content to be released on my M340i. That's it for this video. Catch you in the next one. Peace.